Hey, in this video, we're going to be using the online version of GeoGebra to, uh, well, let's start off in graphing mode first. And I'm going to make two points real quick before I talk about what this video is about. The first point is, in general, you want to do better than the average public school student out there. Uh, we'll be addressing that here primarily. Uh, we're going to choose perspective geometry to make a blank canvas uh, and the second point is you want to have your you want to have something of your saved up money making more money out in the free market invested in things than you would have just stashed stored away maybe hidden in a bank account anyways we need to talk about the schooling issue. In this case, we're going to try to get an edge up uh, on what peop on what the average person knows about the Pythagorean theorem, let alone if they've went to public school or not. Some total average, hopefully. I wish I could remember the video I got this ultimate trick from, but. Um, Hopefully you'll see the Pythagorean theorem in a new way after we're over. We're going to take our straight edge, draw it across these two points, uh, do a little GeoGebra magic real quick, get that midpoint between them, put the needle of our compass where that midpoint would magically appear, and uh, draw a line to intersect our two prefabricated points. Why did I do this? Because according to Thales' theorem, if we take the diameter of the circle and place a third point on the circumference, something's going to happen. And that something is, that third point is always going to create a right triangle with respect to any diameter. Um, so, any diameter, any point, right triangle. There you have it. Uh, some thanks to Thales, if you're ever trapped out on an island surrounded by the water, you can uh, give him a holler if you need to make a emergency right triangle. Um, so next we need to make this square. And the point of this part of the exercise is to just drill in the fact this is pointless, this is kind of dumb, this can be exhausting, and like I mentioned, maybe we're on an abandoned island and we need to have a math lesson to keep from going insane. Uh, so we're going to try to make these squares from scratch and just role play the madness out. And, that, and secretly, that madness is uh, kind of the basis of our education for a long time. Um, but it's no biggie. We'll keep rolling. Okay. So, zoom out here. Take our point tool and ow. No. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna have to after making those three points, we're gonna have to use more GeoGebra magic. Presto. Probably just need a boop. Presto. We'll make three more points at those fresh intersections. Uh oh. 
lost my place. Um, okay. And we're going to make our perpendicular lines. Last three points. Maybe you can see the squares perfectly now. We'll clean this up in just one second. So we can get closer down to business. All right. So, as I was saying, these squares are completely frivolous. The only thing that matters is that the shapes at each side of the right tri triangle are congruent. Or, I'm sorry, the polygons, not shapes. Uh, the polygons, all three of them, have to be congruent, regardless if they're a different size. But their size ultimately is constrained by these uh, aspects of math. All right. So there we have it. We have our right triangle. And missed a couple points. Yes, lobby. We have now our classic setup. 18.29 plus 6.71, what is that, 1, 9, that's a 0, carry the 1 to the 2, that's a 3, plus 7, that's another 0, we got to carry another 1 over uh, to the 8, and 6, 1 plus 6, that's 7, plus 8, that's 15, we got to carry another 1, but we got a 5 now, and uh, that 1 plus a 1 is a 2, that's 25, 20, so that square plus this square equals that square because this is the area of the square. We can have any area. This perimeter is really boxing us in. Sorry, these perimeters. Wow, they're all teaming up on us. How about that? Um, let's see if we can... Well, before I do that, I want to do this. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm going to make some brand new polygons. Oh, no. Try that again. I think I goofed again. Okay. Third time, possibly the charm. That's not true about this video. Um... place was it okay I'm confused I was trying to make this symmetrical maybe I did okay so what are the proportions of these things I just cut out what was gonna happen well 
check these values again. Show label, show value. Uh, that's always important. Check the label, check to see if it's name or value. Yeah, what's this number? That's half of that. Uh, maybe that nine. Nine is about half of 18, and one is half of two, and four is about half of nine. And three is half of six, three is half of, about half of seven. Uh, six, is, uh, six is about half of 12, and there's a one close to two. So these, are, these numbers are halves, uh, which makes sense. I just cut the square in half, but still the same idea remains. Uh, 3.36 plus 9.14, this is 6 plus 4, that's a 0 with a 1 carried over. Uh, 1 plus 1 plus 3, that's 5. Um, 9 plus 3, that's 12, so 12.5, and that's what that is. This area plus this area equals that area about the right triangle because these are congruent that's the key these are congruent it doesn't matter that these are squares we just sell we just say those words nobody's ever really put I'll put my words aside where I was going anyways you'll get the point a little bit more maybe um, I'm going to make midpoints here all over the place. I'm going to cut them half again. What's going to happen? Is this getting boring? Well, I hope this drives home the point. These aren't silly squares. But. Just sometimes seeing is believing, even for some people in math, and uh, that's just the way life is. You gotta roll with it. Okay, I think I got it. One point six eight plus four point five seven. Let's see, seven eight. That's five with one carried over. Five plus six. What's that one? That's twelve. So carry that one. Leave the two and the five. Uh, that's one plus five plus one six. Six point two five. Six point two five. There we go. All right. Um. So I could just keep on doing that, really. I could even cut this square in half, cut that square in half. If we stay congruent and we stay proportional, this right triangle is always going to produce that magical formula. It's addition of areas. We'll soon dig a little bit deeper into what I just said there. In fact, that's the entire point of what I'm trying to show to you. It's not about the recitation. It's not about just saying square without really understanding what that means. It's about understanding the concept behind the sound, not even just the form of the words, the sound of the words, seeing past those things to, the, to these concepts. I could keep on cutting these things in half. It doesn't mean that that's a special case of the squares or what have you, we'll keep going. But I'll use someone else's aid here. But you saw how painful it was to construct that and then to do this. 
and this is all arbitrary. The square, the first triangle, or the second right triangle, or the second <laughs> triangle about this right triangle. All we need is the right triangle, which we can generate from the circle and the diameter. And then we can look at things this way. As this uh, guy points out, Um, so, pretty easy explanation, uh, straightforward. You reflect the triangle about this side. It, that's your C squared right there the right triangle itself. Uh, the part that you don't really get to hone in on here is these two triangles. Forget this first triangle one over here. Forget this one. It's just a copy of this. This triangle three and this triangle too, that's the whole triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We don't even need any shape at all. Is the illusion clear at that point? Or is that just too direct? The triangle itself is C squared. Not C squared half. For some of y'all out there, it's just C squared. The concept, we could just call that concept square. That's not, that's misleading with respect to how our intuitions may work. Okay, anyways, um, I like that a lot. And Maybe ask yourself some stuff about that one, because I think that's a very exceptional demonstration of the Pythagorean theorem. However, I don't believe that's what's going to really help us get one step closer to, in general, to what all of us humans love or what really helps us learn. What's really going to help us learn is pizza. So we have our right triangle, as we did before. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm supposed to kind of show you guys. I can get this to moving. Wow. This thing doesn't like to move a lot. I totally spoiled this part. It's kind of close enough. I think we get the idea. That is A, B. See over here? Uh-oh, there's a big problem. C's not supposed to be that number. I'm sorry. Anyways. I'm gonna forget that part for now. Um, 
try to get this to switch over. Too much time got consumed. Uh, I want to wrap this up. We have a traveler's problem. We want to go see the Big Apple. So, in the Big Apple, what's one thing you're going to want to do? You're going to want to go get pizza. Let's say, I said traveler, let's say you're playing for a baseball team. Uh, and you guys just won. Heck, maybe even just won the World Series over at Yankees home turf. Better go get some pizza. Uh, problem is... New York pizza is kind of expensive. And... I don't know about you, but, uh... I don't like paying for expensive pizza. Oh, now this thing's not going to work for me. Uh, I'm sorry. I guess all that ranting uh, misled me. You need to select circular sector here. Not that you need to know how to do this necessarily. Um, and we're always going to be moving a counterclockwise uh, sort of position. Uh, when constructing the circles, you saw me struggling with that earlier. Um, we're going to select this area here, select that area here, select that area here. We're going to show the label, and go to settings, and we're going to choose value. Let's go name it value. I'm tired of doing all this math. Okay. Let's see. We want this G. We want to name this S. We want this E. We want this to be M. We want this H. We want this to be L. All right. So you go play baseball. New York Stadium, you win. Heck, it's even the World Series. You gotta go get some pizza with your team. Now, problem is, New York pizza, as I said, expensive. And uh, here's the rates. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't go. Um, you got the small pizza here. It's about what? Uh, it's about three feet in diameter, is what they say, and it costs 50 bucks. Then you got uh, this pizza over here, the medium. The medium costs 80 bucks. Okay. It's four feet in diameter. Then you got this pizza. 
Maybe the one thing these New Yorkers have us Texans beat on is the size of their pizza. I'll tell you what. And the size of the pizza is that big for the large. The large is a whopping 120 bucks. All right. It's five feet in diameter. So, I showed you how big all those pizza slices were. You can kind of get a rough idea of what it's like here. Small, medium, large. And you know what? Maybe I might uh, move, tamper with the scales here, tamper with the scales there. Who knows what I'm going to do to you. You know, you just beat my favorite team. I could change the size of these pizzas all day long. I could change the price of them all day long. But there you go. That's the proposition for you. I could sell this one. Eh. Let's bring it back to about three feet. Or that small. Eh, you know, close enough. It's very close. Do I want to? Oh, I'm going to do this. Okay. Good. Oh, it's getting <laughs> a little late on the timer. All right. So you have a thousand and two hundred dollars to spend on all this pizza for all your teammates even though those pizzas are large you got a lot of pizza to buy for your pizza team and uh, i forgot to clue you in about that part of all this propositioning you're paying for it all but luckily uh let's say that thousand dollars was no problem to you and besides you won the world series don't be don't be that way even though they're going to sting you just do the diplomatic thing and the this case the most diplomatic thing it's always the most diplomatic thing to do the math and what do we do there with those prices and these variable sizes you just come at me anyway I'm just gonna change this up if I was the pizza joint owner and you just beat my favorite team in our home turf and all this you got the nerve to walk in my place this is not happening but and so we're going to play this game. You are being challenged with this. These things are fluctuating. The small could be larger than the medium. The medium could be larger than the small. What are you going to do? Um, but the large is always going to be the largest. Don't worry about that. And it's going to be 110 bucks for that sucker. <laughs> I don't think I could do that. I let it party sure but um never on any other any occasion that's not special that's for sure Ugh, hundred dollars for some pizza that gives me nightmares um but that's probably the way some people live you can forget about all this you're given a hundred sorry it was 120 dollars for large and you're given a thousand two hundred dollars and you can buy any amount of these pizzas or whatever i don't know those mediums cranking that up the medium might get kind of i don't know i kind of misspoke uh medium's not gonna go that size we're gonna have just the three diameter pizza four diameter and five diameter so what do you do with that thousand two hundred dollars well the answer is you just buy nothing but larges that's the best deal that's always been common sense bulk wins the day uh, purchasing in bulk wins the day uh, but sometimes some people buy like that so 
but it's, it largely holds true uh, in the real world. Um, and if you add these numbers up, 3.54 uh, plus 6.27, that's 9.82. So this plus this equals this area. Well, this is proportional. This is half of the actual area of the whole pizza. But hopefully you get the idea. If I just make these whole circles, it's still going to apply. Because fundamentally, as like I was hinting at, this is just about the right triangle. The key there, 50 plus 80, that's 130. That's more expensive than 120 for large. Purchase in bulk. Use the Pythagorean theorem. Maybe think about it a little bit longer.